For today's video, I've got something very different than usual. Ever since I can remember, I've always been obsessed with scary conspiracy videos, but I also always thought that none of you guys would ever be interested in it. That was until I came across this McDonald's conspiracy theory that made me think, oh my god, there's gotta be so much more out there. And let's just say that I was not wrong. Go grab something to eat, maybe something to drink, because I've got for you some of the scariest, most bizarre food conspiracy theories. I'm not joking now, before we get into the video, I just want to say that these are just theories. I found them online, I'm not the person who's creating them, I'm only going to expose them to you guys, and obviously it's up to you whether you believe in them or not. So this is just the disclaimer before we get into the video. McDonald's is with no doubt the most successful, most popular fast food restaurant all over the world. They've got 40,000 stores in over 100 countries, and they they sell over 70 million customers every single day. So as you can imagine, there are a lot of McDonald's food conspiracy theories out there and I'm just naming a few of them. I've actually looked this up and every single day McDonald's gets hundreds of tweets of people complaining about the broken ice cream machines. It went as far as becoming kind of a meme in like recent years as well. I also found some websites reporting that in the last 12 months, people who eat at McDonald's are 75% more likely to complain about the freaking broken ice cream machines. So you'd probably think that it'd be of McDonald's best interest to come and just fix the ice cream machines. Why are they broken all the time? But according to this conspiracy theory, the problem doesn't come from high up in McDonald's. It doesn't come from the people in like the McDonald's offices. The theory is that the machine isn't actually broken and the problem comes directly from the McDonald's employees. This is a big statement, but according to the theory, the McDonald's employees straight up lie to you just so they don't have to make any McFlurries, any milkshakes, anytime that it's very close to the closing time of the store. So I went on Reddit and I found this comment from someone who allegedly worked at McDonald's. I mean, there's no way to actually prove this but they said that the ice cream machine at McDonald's takes three hours to clean every single day and every 14 days they have to disassemble the whole thing just to clean every single piece individually and I think it's made out of 14 different pieces. I don't think it's that crazy to believe that every single night before the restaurant closes they switch off the machine for the three hour cleanup just so the next morning when they open the restaurant again the machines are ready to be used then to make ice cream. So. No one actually has to come in earlier to switch on the machines. I guess that is a plausible explanation. Obviously, you guys know me. I really wanted to put to test this conspiracy theory. So I actually drove to the McDonald's that is kind of near my house. This McDonald's closes in less than one hour. So we're gonna put this conspiracy theory to test. Am I going to be able to get a McFlurry even though this McDonald's closes in one hour? So according to the theory, it should not be working the machines because they switch them off a lot earlier for the next day. Hi, can I take a look? Hi, um, could I please get one um, Cadbury cream egg McFlurry? So we don't have any ice cream now? Oh, uh, could, could I get a milkshake maybe? I actually couldn't get a freaking McFlurry, wow. I am in complete disbelief, guys. I actually thought like they were just gonna have the ice cream, but I guess the theory kind of worked for me. I mean, I did come here like an hour before it closes and they didn't have ice creams and I tried to order a milkshake, they also didn't have it, so it wasn't the specific ice cream. The machine wasn't actually working. This next conspiracy theory, it's so incredibly creepy and bizarre that I just, I just have to show it to you guys first. So this is from a commercial, a McDonald's commercial that aired all over Japan. That is exactly what you're thinking. That is Taylor Swift. Like, there's no way to deny it. That looks exactly like Taylor Swift. I am the biggest Taylor Swift fan in the world, and even I can't deny that that looks exactly like her. It almost looks like this 
devil demon ish version of Taylor Swift there's something like very creepy about it the girl in the video looks exactly like Taylor Swift the whole thing is very bizarre and creepy it's got this weird vibe to it which made me think why would McDonald's specifically hire this girl who looks so much like a famous pop star? What is the purpose of that? So I read a few YouTube comments, I also did my research and I came across this really bizarre thing that is the celebrity lookalike industry. It's really weird, but there's these agencies all over the world who specifically manage people who look like celebrities. I really wanted to find a specific case in which a brand has used like an actual celebrity lookalike in order to trick people into thinking that is the real celebrity. And I found this video from a coffee brand in Israel and I'm gonna play you the video and you tell me if that doesn't look exactly like George Clooney. There's nothing like a new espresso machine. If I hadn't told you before you watched the clip, you'd probably think that was an espresso advert with George Clooney in it, but no. That was just a celebrity lookalike. Back to this specific case with McDonald's and Taylor Swift, I do find it a little bit difficult to believe that this is the reason why this advert exists because if there's a brand that's got enough money to pay Taylor Swift to be in an advert, that would definitely be McDonald's. The scary thing is that this really got me wondering how many times I've seen an ad on a newspaper, on a magazine, on TV, in which I really thought it was a celebrity or a famous person in it and it was probably just a lookalike. This next theory is actually about the Starbucks logo and I gotta be honest, I didn't know anything about this, but there are millions, and I mean millions of people, who believe there are evil subliminal messages hidden in the Starbucks logo. Apparently the original Starbucks logo featured this mermaid with the bare chest and I think that was supposed to represent Seattle which is where Starbucks comes from and is supposed to be representing like fishing and the boat industry. According to what I read online people were very uncomfortable with the fact that the mermaid had like a bare chest so a lot of people were writing complaints. That's why Starbucks changed its logo into the current logo. As you can imagine some people don't actually buy into this and I think the reason why Starbucks changed its logo is something a lot darker that I personally wouldn't have thought this not in a million years. So when you look at the Starbucks logo it's round and it's got the letter Starbucks on top and then some coffee in the bottom I think and then in the center it's got a mermaid so a lot of people believe that the mermaid is very strange because if you look at it, the fishtail, I think that's what you call it, of the mermaid, it's almost a little bit weird because it almost splits in two. It's almost like a double fishtail. So a lot of religious people believe that when you flip the image upside down, that you actually get the devil. It is a weird fishtail, but... I don't know, it's definitely creepy. And I'm also not joking, like a lot of people, like millions of people believe this. You can type it on Google, you can type it on YouTube. A lot of people believe that Starbucks basically is selling these Illuminati symbols, which is the devil and just spreading it all over the world. I don't want to be disrespectful to the people who believe in it because I do believe in a lot of weird things that probably don't make a whole lot of sense, but this one just doesn't seem very realistic to me. Moving on to another Starbucks conspiracy theory, and this one I feel like there might be some truth in it. There are so many YouTube videos, blog posts about this, but a lot of people believe that when you go to Starbucks and they ask your name and they misspell it, some people think they spell your name wrong on purpose. Just so you go ahead, take a photo of it and you post it on Facebook, on Instagram, all over your social media and Starbucks is doing it for promo. When I first heard about this, I thought it was so genius that I can't even get upset. I've been thinking about this and I actually see this happening all the time. Just the other day, I was on Twitter and I follow one of my favorite YouTubers and he posted a picture of his Starbucks drink and the reason why he posted it was because they misspelled his name. And the first thing I thought when I saw that photo was, 
I really feel like going to Starbucks. I really feel like getting an iced drink from Starbucks. It actually worked on me. I actually left my house to go to Starbucks and get a drink because I realized that I really felt like one. So this YouTuber is got like 350,000 followers. So imagine how many people were probably affected by that tweet as well. And the weird thing is that it wasn't until I sat down to film this video and looked up all these conspiracy theories that I realized what actually happened. Think about the amount of money that Starbucks is probably saving because they don't have to go and pay people. They don't have to pay popular YouTubers to post a picture of their drinks because every time they get their name misspelled, we all go ahead and just post photos of it. Obviously, this is just my opinion, but I think it's genius. I could never get upset about that. I think that is funny and also very smart. So if it's true, which we'll never know, I'm all for it. So here we are at Starbucks and I'm gonna go ahead and order a drink and I'm gonna say that my name is Rafa because I'm, listen, it's very easy to spell. So I think there's no way you could get it wrong. So I just got back home from Starbucks and I'm about to show you what they wrote when I said my name is Rafa. I said Rafa so slowly to make sure they wouldn't get it wrong and they still got it wrong. I mean, it doesn't prove anything, but that is weird. This next conspiracy theory is about Nutella, the world's most loved sweet snack. Or is it really? Not sure if you guys have noticed this, but in the recent years, people went from loving Nutella, like literally treating it like it's a food from gods, to not really talking much about it anymore. So the conspiracy theory is that in 2015, Nutella drastically changed the recipe by removing an insane amount of hazelnuts in every jar. So the amount used to be from 50 to 55 hazelnuts. So I tried to do some research about this to see if there's some truth in it. And weirdly, the period of time in which people start complaining about Nutella changing the recipe, it matches almost exactly with the time in which Turkey was producing a lot less hazelnuts than usual. This is known information, but Turkey actually produces around 75% of the world's hazelnuts. And in 2015, because I think the winters were very, very cold in Turkey, uh, they actually couldn't produce the same amount of hazelnuts. A lot of companies were relying on these hazelnuts. And what happened was a lot of companies like Hershey's, for example, they had to increase the prices on products with hazelnuts because they became a lot more expensive. But here's the weird thing, Nutella didn't actually increase their prices around that time. So a lot of people believe that they got away with using a lot less hazelnuts so that the prices could stay the same and just fill the rest with sugar and palm oil or whatever product that goes in Nutella. This is what the conspiracy theory believes in. I did some more research and a former employee of Ferrero said that Ferrero is a company that buys from everywhere and uses every kind of product from every place. They even drop their hazelnut content from 17 to 13%, which is insane. So Ferrero actually came forward and replied to that and they said, it's always been 13% hazelnuts. So I guess this conspiracy theory was actually denied by the company, but you guys let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think Nutella tastes any different in recent years? Do you think it's more sugary or do you think it literally just tastes the same? I actually really want to know what you guys think because I definitely have a strong opinion on this. I'm just not gonna share it because I don't want to get in trouble. Chipotle is my life. I think their food is amazing. I think their prices are not too crazy and the company itself it stays pretty low on drama. It doesn't get involved in too many things. This conspiracy theory is actually about the E. coli contamination in 2015 in a lot of Chipotle restaurants. I'm not sure if you guys remember this. It really was huge. They had to close restaurants in over 14 states because of E. coli contamination. And these news were everywhere. It was everywhere on the internet, on your TV. Not entirely sure about this, but I did try to do some research, but I think E. coli is like a bacteria that is found in the intestines of humans and also some specific animals. So this really wasn't good for Chipotle. They had like over 150 people who claimed to have symptoms and it was just like a very bad period for the restaurant. 
I looked up the news and there's still some headlines about this, even though it's been three years, almost four years later, Chipotle is still fighting some people who don't want to go there anymore because of what happened in 2015. This is a good one because the theory is that this actually wasn't Chipotle's fault. Some conspiracy theorists believe that Chipotle was actually a victim of sabotage by the biotech industry because apparently Chipotle refuses to use GMOs, they're super anti-genetically modified organisms in their food. So people believe that because that really upset the biotech industry, they actually made this outbreak happen on Chipotle's foods to show people that it really isn't as safe to go eat other restaurants. This is another one in which I don't really know what to think, but I do think that is incredibly scary that if two massive industries like the food industry or the biotech industry, if they want to have a fight with each other, the victims are the customers almost always. It's very bizarre and weird to think that we literally trust these companies with our lives. At the same time, the biotech industry is made of scientists, which are very intelligent people, and I like to believe that they wouldn't put people's lives in danger like that. So, I don't know, just let me know what you guys think of it. That was intense, but this next one is a little more lighthearted. So this is about Domino's. So I'm not sure how many of you guys have actually ordered pizza through the Domino's official app, but basically, every time you order it, it comes up this little thing where you can track the progress of your delivery. It's called the pizza tracker. It basically tells you if your order has been accepted by the restaurant and when the pizza is being made, and most importantly when the pizza is going to be delivered in your house. The reason why this conspiracy theory has got a lot of credibility is because a lot of people who are accusing Domino's of this are actually people who make apps themselves. A lot of people from the tech industry believe in this. So they think that the pizza tracker doesn't actually work. It's basically like looking at a GIF that does the same thing every single time. Like the time on it is literally the same every single time. It's just so it keeps you entertained when you're waiting for your pizzas so you're less likely to complain or call the restaurant. It's basically a gimmick, so personally, I've had experiences in which I've looked at the app at the pizza tracker and it says that the pizza has been delivered. Like this happened probably twice already. So I ring the restaurant and I say, hey, maybe you got the pizza delivered to the wrong house because no one's here. And here's the crazy thing. Both times they've told me that the pizza hasn't even left the restaurant. So why is the pizza tracker telling me that the pizza should be in my house? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Once again, there's no way to prove this. I mean, I certainly don't have the capacities to prove this to you, but I feel like it could be real, but it could also not be real. It's just one of those things. Either way, it's not a very harmful thing I guess to people. I actually did this but you guys can also give it a try but if you go on Twitter and you type in the words McDonald's and soda there's so many people saying that the coca-cola tastes so much better at McDonald's than anywhere else. Some people try to justify it by saying that the reason why the McDonald's drinks are so much better is because they use a lot more syrup so they're more concentrated so it tastes a lot more like the real drinks like if you buy like a bottle bottle of Coca-Cola at the supermarket. But the conspiracy theory says that actually the trick isn't in the amount of syrup that McDonald's uses. The amount is exactly the same as in any other restaurant like Burger King or KFC. The actual reason why the drinks taste so much better is because of the way Coca-Cola delivers the syrup to McDonald's. So to normal restaurants, this syrup arrives in these plastic bags, like see-through plastic bags with a whole lot of Coca-Cola syrup. But in McDonald's, they arrive in these giant containers that are made of stainless steel. So the light can't even get through and then the flavors will stay way more like preserved in it. Like it's not going to be damaged by the sunlight or anything else. A lot of people believe in this because it also explains why when you go to a McDonald's, it doesn't matter where you are, even if it's like the local McDonald's closer to your house or one that is in a completely different country, the Coca-Cola seems to taste exactly the same in every single one of them. And if you go to other fast food places, sometimes that is not the case all the time. If you're ever thirsty and you want to get a soda or a fizzy drink and you don't really know where to go and you're debating whether you should go to Burger King or McDonald's, 
then this conspiracy theory says that you should probably go to McDonald's because their product is a lot better handled so it's got a lot more quality in it. I can see how that could be truth so there's once again no way to prove it unless one of you guys works at McDonald's and please let me know in the comment section. I think it could definitely be real this one. If you guys like this video please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up especially if you want to watch an episode 2. If you get a good amount of thumbs up I might actually film an episode 2 next week already so definitely let me know. If you didn't like it that's fine. I will never ever make one of these again even though I had a lot of fun filming it. Do not forget to subscribe and to switch my notifications on so you guys don't miss out on future videos. I've got a lot of different things, also a lot of food videos coming up so I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Thank you for the support even when I'm trying different things. It really does mean a lot to me that I feel like this is a safe space for me to create different things and I've always wanted to make one of these and I felt really cool filming it. I feel like one of those like sketchy, like weird part of YouTube YouTubers. I'm kind of scared. I don't really know what the reaction is going to be, but I guess I will see you on my next video. Bye bye.